California isn't really known for its car-free way of life. All the cities in the Golden State are connected by road in some way or another, whether that's by major 12-lane interstates running through them or smaller state highways. All of the cities allow cars, and whether or not the state wants to admit it, it prioritizes traveling by car, simply by the fact that one of the world's biggest economies hasn't invested in an interconnected web of rail travel. You still can't take a train from LA to San Francisco, nor San Diego to Sacramento, nor Palm Springs to Palo Alto. It's safe to say California's car centricity has affected all cities within its borders. All except one. This is Catalina Island. It's a rocky island located off the Southern California coast, about 29 miles south-southwest of Long Beach. On the island, there are two settlements, the unincorporated community of less than 300 residents, known as Two Harbors on the north end of the island, and the city of Avalon on the south end. Avalon is home to just about 3,500 residents, and is the only city in California where automobiles are fully regulated. And the reason why, and how the residents have used certain loopholes to get around the regulations, is fascinating. Being that it's an island with no bridge connection, the only way onto Catalina and the city of Avalon is through boat, most commonly through the ferry service that leaves from a few points along the Southern California coast, including San Pedro, Long Beach, Newport Beach, and Dana Point. And no, you gasoline fiends out there watching this, there is no regular vehicle ferry service for visitors to take their car to Avalon or the rest of Catalina Island. So why does Avalon impose such a restriction? Well, according to the city government's website, due to the size and nature of the streets in Avalon and the characteristics and nature of the city itself, the city has established special rules regulating the size, number, noise, speed, and classes of vehicles used, permitted, or operated on the streets. Wow, Avalon truly seems to be the only car-free city in the state of California. That's awesome. So how do the residents get around? Light rail, a trolley system? I mean, it's a small city, so I bet most people just walk around everywhere, right? Well, not exactly. You see, there are a few exceptions to Avalon's vehicle restrictions. Upon visiting the city, you'll be able to gather that the main method of transportation within the city is by small gasoline or electric-powered motor cars, referred to locally as autoettes. The most prevalent form of these autoettes are golf carts. There are golf carts all over Avalon in front of every condo, apartment, townhome, and business. Not only golf carts, but similarly sized vehicles such as the Smart Car, Modified Suzuki Samurais, and other eclectic foreign makes and models of cars fit for Avalon's narrow streets. Used to skirt around the automobile restrictions, pun absolutely intended, these autoettes have become sort of a workaround by residents who haven't been allowed access to a full-size vehicle permit, but still want to get around on four wheels. But even these are regulated too. You see, to be considered an autoette, Vehicles can only be under 55 inches wide, 120 inches long, and weigh less than 1,800 pounds. Any resident may acquire an autoette permit with the restriction of one permit per household. That's a much different set of rules than the one regulating full-size cars. It's very difficult for a private citizen to get a permit to have a full-size vehicle on Avalon. The permits are issued to the individual as opposed to a specific vehicle and is surrendered when the residency on the island ends. Permits are non-transferable except through petition before the city council and only one new vehicle permit is issued for every two permits that become ineligible to be renewed or voluntarily surrendered. This effectively reduces the number of full-size vehicles on the island to an eventual zero in due time. And while the city of Avalon is already pretty dense and walkable without the car restrictions, the restrictions imposed on full-size vehicles no doubt contribute to the biking and pedestrian friendliness of the city. Life is a lot less stressful when you can cross the street without worrying about a distractive F-150 driver barreling down the road going 45 in a 20 zone. Now just to be clear, the risk and danger of getting hit by an autoette isn't zero, and personally I think it's still kind of crazy that the island allows full-size vehicles at all. It's a bit silly, especially when strolling through the town on Google Maps where you can see golf cart after golf cart and then the odd Ford Explorer. There's just no need for that. It's been proven that golf carts and autoettes can do and go just about anywhere and anything on the island. It wouldn't truly be a car-free tropical paradise until automobiles are fully phased out on the island. Maybe Avalon should take a page out of its Midwestern counterpart, Mackinac Island, who is not only fully car-free, but is even home to the nation's only official car free bike only state highway. Avalon's unique laws have lended themselves to some unique situations on the island. 
Reports of golf cart traffic jams have been cited, especially on tourist high seasons when the number of golf carts on the road increases drastically. It's also pretty amusing to peek at the online galleries of photos of quirky auto wet concoctions, from this micro FedEx truck to mini minivans to golf carts with towing capabilities. It's all just pretty crazy, and goes to show the lengths some Americans, especially Californians, will go in order to have their four set of wheels, or even three. In its current state, Avalon's permitting policies seem to be holding up without too many problems. The city's peak population was recorded at the 2010 census and actually declined for the first time since the 1970 census as of the 2020 census. That effectively means less cars on the roads and a more pedestrian-friendly Avalon. The city keeps three wait lists for regular sized vehicles, a residential vehicle waiting list, a commercial vehicle waiting list, and an interior commercial vehicle waiting list. And while the city's website doesn't provide an official timeline for new applications, some unconfirmed reports claim that the list is up to a 20-year wait. Hopefully that deters any would-be Ford Explorer owners from sending their applications anyway. But time will tell. Will regular sized vehicles cease to exist on the island by the end of the century? Will the city ban new applications altogether? In any case, the Autoet already reigns supreme, and I'm glad to report that it's officially been added into my vocabulary forever. Be sure to let me know down in the comments section what you think of Avalon's automobile laws, and if you've ever visited, what it's like walking around town on your own two feet. As always, I'll see you again next week on Town, City, State.